been so long, I'm nervous. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I thought we were gonna start. We haven't recorded one of these in a month, and now uh, that's, that's how, how I was going. Uh, have you ever read a bunch of books by different authors? Right. Unfailingly, there's going to be some books you like more than others. Yes, definitely. And whether that's within one series or within multiple series of that author. Yep. Sometimes you get the author at the peak. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's their first book. Um, and sometimes it's the first book that's amazing. And later on, they, they kind of struggle. Uh, today, we want to talk about a few of our favorite authors and maybe some of their best books and some of their worst books uh, and talk great. about why. Should we start with our favorite favorite? Favorite favorite. Let's do it. Sanderson. Brandon. Sanderson, Sanderson, comma, Brandon. He needs a like middle name that I can say to like for bring real. him here. All right, so let's start with the worst. Okay. Uh, this one... We, I don't feel like this is much of a debate. It's not. Well, I All don't right. know. I feel like there was a couple that I thought about grabbing. Okay, what well, the ones you thought about grabbing? Um, so I had Calamity was one that I thought about grabbing. The third of that series. Um, I also thought of the Librarians one, Evil Librarians. Oh, Alcatraz? But that's just because... Come on. It's not my age group, you know? Come on. Little, little that that doesn't that doesn't belong there. Okay. Um, right. I do know the people. Some people you haven't finished it yet that would put um, Rhythm of War probably in this as well. Oh. Um, right. Which is just That's it sad. suffers. Middle books suffer. Right. They 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 do. Right. There's not a lot all, of resolution. Yeah. All middle um, books are rough. But that's why I thought this book would actually be good. Right. But because I thought it was the end, it turned out it's not the end. Um, right. And so I think it suffers from the same thing. Right. Doesn't have a lot of resolution. Moves the plot along, but. Barely moves the plot along. It's kind of, this felt very much like a novella to me. You know what? Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. Just It very much had a novella feel of like, oh, go on a little adventure. And, and that, you know, if it wasn't for Mbot and all of his redeeming qualities, I think I would have really had a hard time with this. I did like some of the characters. Um, I did, but it, it just felt like, hey, we were going for this one big reveal. And it yeah. took the entire thing to get to that reveal. And that reveal will help move the plot along for the next book, but it really didn't do much for this. It looked like a side quest. Yeah, and it was a little bit awkward getting there. It's like bumps yeah. and okay. That's it. I did like some of the characters, and I will say that that Sanderson is on another level for me most of the time compared to authors. So while this was sure. not his best work, it's not bad. Nope, not bad at all. So this is book three of Skyward. In case we didn't make that yeah. clear, yeah, the, and so book four comes out very, very, very soon, and we are excited. Yeah, the Skyward Flight series is really good. Highly recommended. This one just pales a little bit. It, I think maybe one of the things you're going to run into with a bunch of these series is when you get far in there, the novelty of the series is gone, right? Yeah. And so it's no longer this like, oh, cool, what's going on? Like all of these things. You're not looking for more larger conflict resolution yep. because the novelty has gone. Um, and so when you don't get that conflict resolution and you no longer have the novelty, it really is hard to kind of, you know, go through those, those uh, different things that pop up and navigate those obstacles um, in a way that feels as appealing as other places. And I think almost every series runs through this. It's, it's rare that you get a middle book that is as good as the, the first or the final book. Let's talk about middle books. Speaking of middle book that's as good, in fact, this is the best Sanderson's ever written, right? So this is Word of Radiance, the second in the Stormlight Archive, and man, is it good. So good. I feel like kind of, well, you're going to talk about someone else in a second, um, Robin Hobb. But this one, to me, the world building, you already know. Like, there's none of that confusion in like learning. So the first book, that's why I feel like this is just a little bit better than the first book because this one, you're already in it. You already know what's going on, so you're not like so lost in figuring it all out. You've kind of you you know what's happening. Yeah, that's fair. So then you can just enjoy it. I can see. I also, just um, I don't know if I've read a book that's more cinematic. I, I don't know yeah. a way to describe that. Yeah. But this book was made to be a, a a movie or a television show at some point. But don't do it. Um, You're gonna mess it up. Oh, I, you might. But man, <laughs> is it made that right? Yeah. Like it's it's really hard. There's just scenes that are are just gripping and and you know it's, it's not the novelty of it per se it's just the people doing amazing things and 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 i'm and being surprised by the results places, yes too. right like, i mean it's, I, it's a very visual in it, my brain yes i think that's a great way to describe it you know on, and uh, you can watch our other build, video we're gonna do on world building but this is one where it excels because it, world building is more than just people, places, things, history. It's can I visualize what's happening? Yeah. And and uh, Sanderson as at the peak of his writing powers when he wrote Words of Radiance. This thing's fat, but this series is amazing. So it's something I didn't know until recently, starting playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Words of Radiance is a Dungeons & Dragons spell. Yeah. Call out for that. So, That's awesome. Anyways, really fun. All right, let's move on to another author. Do you want to go or do you want me to? Go ahead. 
All right, so I'll go. So uh, Jamie mentioned Robin Hobb. So I love Robin Hobb, right? So she is the queen of fantasy literature, in my opinion. Um, really, really amazing books. Um, and the interesting thing is all in the Elderlings series. So this is all one series, as opposed to like Sanderson, where you're going to jump around, or some others, you're going to get one long, long series, um, which means it has its ups and downs. I think the downs for me fall here, right? So this is in um, the Dragon, or excuse me, the Rainwild Chronicles. This is City of Dragons. Um, and this suffers from a lot of what we talked about, right? This is a middle series in a middle book in a middle series, right? You know a lot of the characters already. You know a lot of the overarching characters. And you just want things to kind of move along. And on top of it, you're kind of in a travelogue, right? They're traveling somewhere. Stuff's happening. And it's not a bad book by any shape of the imagination. It just isn't as good as the rest of the books that are going to be in the, the series and in the larger Elderling Saga. Um, still very much worth a read. I very much recommend reading uh, the Rainwild Chronicles. And it's important to be able to do that to get to the end of, of all of Elderlings. You need the context that's in here. It's just not the peak, right? Makes the peak, sense. in my opinion, there's a lot of debates here. Uh, but to me, the peak is actually... Uh, this would be Mad Ship. Interesting. Um, right? So this is the second of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Um, and so this tends to be the second trilogy that people tend to read. So first starting with Assassin's That's Apprentice and the Farseer uh, trilogy. And then you get into here. Um, it's just so good. Just so good. Rich characters. Rich place. A world that you 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 know can grasp and understand and but still is is large and mythical and you don't know everything about it and you start realizing like wait a minute this is in the same world as as over here but things don't quite line up what's yeah. happening and and not all those questions are resolved and that's actually nice because it leaves things for later but it does have clean resolutions um but but also leaves enough for the next book too and just carries you into that next book really well um right that allows that that series to finish well just Fantastic, and, and I think one of the big things is Hobb is always carried by her characters and their relationships, right? It's the relationships to each other that bring the richness in her world, and there are some awesome relationships because there's some amazing characters in here. Um, awesome doesn't necessarily mean relationships you'd want, um, but they're relationships that you can empathize with, you can sympathize with, and that you, you feel. There's a visceral feeling to many of them um, for good and bad. That are just awesome. So yeah, Mad Ship, uh, highly, highly recommend the the Ship of Mad Live Ship Traders uh, series. Ship of Magic is first, um, Mad Ship is second, um, and I think she may have hit her peak here. So great. How about you? What do you got next? Well, I'm just over here kicking myself, but it's fine. So I got Sarah J. Mass because I like that she has multiple series to choose from. Uh -huh. I read. Yep. But then I realized I grabbed two books in the same series. So that backfired, but also maybe that's oh, kind of telling. But it, it is, is it her best and worst? Yeah, I really think so. So I don't think it matters. This, I mean, this right. is theoretically in the same series. Yes. Good right, point. just just not in the same trilogy, right? right? There's a, like it, it extends long points. So I, I, don't, I think that's completely fine yeah. um, as long as they're, they're best and worst. All right, well, that's what I say is her worst. I did not love the pacing. I do think there was some some good character development, but not as much as I would have hoped, especially for multiple characters. There's only really one good character development going on. Um, it's a chunky book for not a lot of character development. Yeah, it's a chunky book for not a lot of character development. Also, just the plot is just like nothing happens, and then literally 20 minutes later, something is solved. Like they didn't, they're not working hard to solve the problems. They're just doing nothing, and then oh yeah, we have this problem. Let's fix it, or let's find it, or let you know. So, didn't love the pacing of this book. I don't think it was her best work. So, it's interesting. This is a book I've actually listened to a fair bit of on accident. <laughs> um, not on accident. We were driving somewhere and, and she had it on, so I listened for hours and hours of it. Um, I don't think anything happened. Like, like, if I could summarize what happens in this book, as far as I remember in listening, they sit around in rooms talking. Lots of flirting. Yep, there's some of that, yeah, which qualifies as sitting around in rooms talking. I remember some training, like weapons training thing yeah um some hanky panky and uh more talking yeah so really just i feel like for one whole book on a character i was a little disappointed i'm really looking forward to elaine's book hopefully that doesn't disappoint me like nesta's book did poor nesta poor nesta always so disappointed 
All right. All right. What do we got next? Court of Mist and Fury. This is the second one of the series. This is technically the fourth. Okay. Depends on how you look at it. I love this book. So you already know the characters because it's the second one. Um, but the way that she makes you feel for the first, I wouldn't say first half, maybe first third of the book, you're like, this sucks. Like, this is a stupid book. But all that's happening for a reason, and she just brings it all together, like ties it up with a nice bow. It's so well written, and I think it accomplishes everything she wants it to accomplish. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. So the last one we have is a good old favorite. We'll start with the worst, uh, J.K. Rowling. All right. So I think we can agree that this is the worst of the Harry Potter series. Which blows my mind because it's so good. This is like, like it's good. Jam packed. Don't get me wrong. Good I stuff. I love this book. Yeah. It's just not her at her peak, which says a lot for how good the rest of the series is. Yeah. It was just phenomenal. Which brings me to the fact that this is the best book. I have brought the best book. Okay. <laughs> so here's the problem. We don't agree on what the best book is. Never have. Never will, I don't think so, because this is the best and she's not coming around to it. She just finished this again and will not come back to uh Because this, this is, is the, the best, best one. one. Right, so I, I think it shows that, that she definitely uh, has kind of a, a prolonged peak. What I'm really interested in is, I know she's written other books and I haven't read those other books. Yeah, Right, uh, by uh, kind of as a, as a pseudonym. Hold on. Do we need to bring in Cursed Child to replace this? So Cursed Child, I didn't count. Yeah, okay. Because okay. It, sure. it's a script, not a book. Okay, thanks. I'm um, good. I'm good but that. yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> Holy cow, is that bad. Um, I don't actually think she wrote it, personally. I think she used chat GPT, the, an unreleased version of it, to uh, to generate it. Whatever. Um, so but, anyway, this is the best book. I don't think that <laughs> my son would agree. So we just finished four. He loved it. He loved it. I, it. I think he won't love this as much. He's eight. Yeah. No. I think who would? it takes a little bit of. Nope. What do you mean? Who would? Um. Like I don't think he'll appreciate this for what it is. Yeah. Only grumpy teenagers appreciate that book for what no, it is. No, that is say uh, number five. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay. Which we're in, by the way. And within what? Much, I was on page eight. Yeah. He's like he's he's being kind of grumpy. I'm like yeah, he's being a grumpy goose. Yeah. He's like he must have not gotten enough sleep. <laughs> Like, if you can tell on page eight that he's yeah. going to be grumpy, like, this is going to be a long book. Harry, Harry was very grumpy. That's just, <laughs> just how it is. Anyway, sorry. He's over it here. This is great. No. So what I'm really curious I mean, about is really. I can't imagine that Rowling is done writing in this world. Right? She, she better not. Like, be. I, I think there'll be another series and things. Do we ever get the peaks that we got in book four? Or book six? <laughs> Um, I, I just wonder, right? Like, it, will you ever get the high? Or will it be, like, if you were a whole series and it was Chamber of Secret level, that is a phenomenal series, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And I'm happy to read it. My kids are going to love it. Like, it's going to be great. But it's not going to have necessarily the same acclaim as if you get into these later books and the level that, that was out there. So I'm really curious to see what is what is the, the bar here for her? Where is she at? Um, and, and I hope that it leans towards these books. Um, but regardless, please write more books. Please. Because these are all excellent and it would be great to be able to see them. Yeah. Well, that's kind of our least favorite and favorite from some of our favorite authors. Yep. Do you agree, disagree? What would you put with these authors or with other authors? Yeah, let us know if there's a peak uh, or a valley, I guess, for <laughs> different authors that maybe we're not talking about. Share it in the comments. We'd love to be able to see it and see if we agree. We probably don't, but that's fine. Uh, but but love to be able to see seeing people at their best is, is awesome. And maybe there's some books we want to avoid from authors. Yeah, I love it. All right. Well, I'm Blake. I'm Jamie. We're blaming. I guess so. See ya. Bye. I waved again. It's fine.